Let me just start off by saying I'm sorry for your loss. Well, I'm gonna promise you I'm gonna do everything I can to find out who did it. If there's any information that you have, I need to know. I can't do this by myself. One of the ways I cope with uh, death over here and homicide is I remain optimistic. The investigation can turn real quick. All right, what you heard, what you know. Got three individuals shot. One is deceased on the scene, and two more going to the hospital. Typically, sergeants don't work cases, but we've been so busy here lately that they uh, decided to take a few of us back into the rotation. Sergeant Anthony Gentili closed over 40 cases as a primary homicide investigator before being promoted. This is his first case as lead investigator in two years. If I'm a little rusty, you can knock the rust off pretty quick. It's like riding a bike. <laughs> Damn spectacle out here. Yo, black cat. That's never good. <sighs> What's going on, everybody? What's his name? Derek. 37-year-old Derek McGinty, known as D, had dreamed of playing professional basketball, but gave up that track to help raise his son and five daughters. One right in the center of his back. Ain't that a bitch. Looks like he was trying to get away, and unfortunately, he took that one in the back. What about the guy in surgery? What's his, what's his name? Uh, Michael Edwards. He was shot on the left side, just up under the arm. I'd be surprised if he makes it. The second victim, 30-year-old Michael Edwards, is a devoted father who works at a local meat processing plant. The third person, he doesn't have much damage. OK. A third victim, shot in the leg, is recovering at the hospital. There was one witness, but he seemed to shoot. Did he hear any arguing or anything? He said one of them came and said, who is Mike? Wow. According to the witness, the shooter was targeting Michael, the victim in critical condition. It appears we have at least one intended target and uh, total disregard for everybody else in the area. In homicide, you see a lot of stuff that people don't see on a daily basis. Can't let things uh, just wear on you. Otherwise, we'll eat you up from the inside. One thing that I, I got to try to nail down is a motive. The fact that I've got two victims that saw the shooting, one of which appears to have been targeted. I'm uh, hopeful he'll know not only who shot him, but why he got shot. But early the next morning, Michael dies. Two of the three victims have expired, unfortunately. It's going to make the investigation a little bit tougher. Tonight, there's a vigil. We'll swing by there. My surviving witness plans on attending. The third victim, who was shot in the leg, may be Gentili's only chance to identify the shooters. My son, it is nice to see that you touched so many lives. Like you touched mine. Our bond was so special. Out of all the things we can do, we can't give life back when we take right. it. Amen. And it doesn't only affect my life, but the people that did it, sooner or later, it's going to affect the people that love them. Oh. 
I'm one of the victims out here that say, Annette can't and shot Mike and beat for no reason, none. What's going on? All right, all right. Sergeant Gentilly speaks with the surviving victim. Walk it through him before me, man. OK. We mind our own business. The one guy who walked up on us, he killed D and Mike. Yep, yep. Second dude ran up on me, and he shot me. OK. Go back. The first dude that walked up that shot D mm -hmm. and Mike, what do he look like? I can't give you a face description. If you were to see them again, do you think you'd be able to identify them? No, I wish I could. Because it took two of my good friends. Wasn't exactly what I wanted to hear, but hey, you know, we'll deal with it. Still very optimistic. What continues to drive me working homicides is um, trying to bring that family some closure. Hey, how are you? Spoke to you on the phone? Mm -hmm. Michael's mother for Veronica Oh, okay. We're going to back. With no additional witnesses, Sergeant Gentilly hopes Michael's family can shed light on who would want Michael dead. All right. Let me just start off by saying I'm sorry for your loss. I'm gonna promise you, I'm gonna do everything I can to find out who did it. All right. What you heard, what you know. What would I know? They used to have a place together a couple years ago. When you say they, who are we talking about? The boy, Lil B. Right? She says someone named Little B was friends with Michael. They used to share an apartment. And someone broke into place. So he automatically assumed they might set up, did whatever. So B thought that Mike set up the, the apartment to get robbed. Yeah. What happened after that? Mike told me that the boy Lil B had a contract out on him. The morning, whoever was supposed to do whatever to Mike, Lil B got locked up that morning. The day he got locked up, somebody was going to hit on Mike at that time? At that day? That day. Okay, so B gets locked up. Then what happens? Lil B just got out mm -hmm. two months ago. Mm -hmm. Ever since he got out, you know, they all in the same neighborhood. So mm -hmm. he always called me and be like, Every time I pass him, he always mugging me. Okay. They weren't cool since that 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 break in. Okay. Got a good suspect. Got a good motive. Okay. I just have to put him there, and I get one shot at it, and I don't want to screw it up. At this point, everything seems to lead to Little B as the person that either set this whole thing up or might have been involved in the actual shooting itself. I guess he sat in jail for a couple years, stewing over being robbed, and, and then uh, he came back. I want to find out where he was the night of the shooting. Earlier today, I was able to track down my suspect and. Uh, he was able to alibi where he was and who he was with. I was able to confirm he was with these people. Never got a feeling from him that he was involved. He appeared to be genuine and felt some sorrow for Mike's mom. I'm going to rule him out at this point. Just going to have to take the investigation in a, in a new direction. With the case gone cold, the victim's families joined the homicide unit to canvas the neighborhood, hoping to uncover any new leads. Just need closure. That was 
justice. We do. We want justice. If we don't get nothing else, that's what we want out of this whole thing, justice. In the years that I spent in homicide, there have been cases with so many leads that you think it's an open and shut case, and then all the leads are dead ends. We won't give up. These things don't go away. Time doesn't just make them go away. They never go away. This was my goal when I joined Atlanta Police Department, was to retire from homicide as a detective, to actually finally get my opportunity.